everybody, welcome back to Muscle Car Campy. If you hadn't hit that subscribe button yet, please hit it now. You don't want to miss anything. Today's car is special in a lot of ways. First of all, it's rare. It's a 69 Coronet RT convertible with the 440. It's one of only approximately th either 318 or 319 made for the U.S. market. It's also special because it's owned by Muscle Car Campy's own videographer, Bruce Jones, who's got the daunting task right now of holding the camera and taking care of this. But um, I love this car. You know, there's nothing like a beefy American muscle car that the top goes down. And you know what they say, the old cliche, if the top goes down, the price goes up. A lot of great options on this car. Start out with the gauges, the uh, infamous tick tock tack, which is you clock obscures the numbers by a lot. Um, you got the windshield washer, you got buckets, you got a console. Uh, one change Bruce did make, the, the wood on the console and the door panels was pretty much shot. So Bruce got an $8 roll of carbon fiber look tape, applied it, and it actually really looks pretty good. You know, if were this my car, I might actually put it all across the instrument panel. It looks really good. Uh, this car has bucket seats, a console, console mounted shifter, um, of course, my favorite part, the car bear button under there to make the hood functional. Uh, one thing this car does have now that it didn't have from the factory is uh, aftermarket air conditioning. Uh, classic auto wear put this kit together. Um, and according to Bruce, it definitely keeps you cold in the summer here in Florida. Um, you know, a two speed wipers even, fancy, fancy. But um, I do love this car. Like I said, those scoops on the hood are functional. And, you know, there is nothing like when this 440 turns on. The car came from the factory with 375 horsepower. It's been augmented with a purple shaft cam. Um, the carburetor on here when Bruce bought the car was way too small, so we put a Summit brand 750 CFM carburetor on it. It also has classic auto wear on it now. This was not an uh, air-conditioned car from the factory, but you definitely need it down here. Uh, to keep everything cool, he has a Wizard cooling radiator on it. Um, this is my favorite part though, the Ram Charger hood. There is the cold air lever you pull under the dash, and it opens up vents over here on the hood and air goes directly into the uh, air cleaner. When you don't have the cold air open, the air comes in through these vents on this side. But I just love the way it looks. The Ram Charger name is magic. Um, now I think it's time we really drove this car. All right, so Bruce, I gotta say, this does bring me back. My first car was a 71 Barracuda convertible, almost the same color. Um, this is not the factory B5 blue metallic. This is uh, intense pearl blue. Yeah, intense which, blue pearl actually is the, the name. It's a Jeep color for late model Jeeps. Okay. Well, I really like it. It's a little different than B5, a little darker, but it's that same beautiful metallic. merging power. Oh, yeah. Despite the uh, road and track name on these cars, they really weren't designed for, uh, you know, corner carving. Not at this size, any 14-inch uh, tires they had from the factory and, you know, front disc brakes. Every bit of 3,800 pounds for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Top down, fantastic cruiser. That's absolutely amazing. Oh, the ride's great. Oh, it does. No rattles, no nothing. I mean, this thing feels terrific. Wow. You bought it mid-restoration. Uh, there really wasn't much to this car when the guy started out. I mean, we're going to show some pictures. There was a, just a ton of rust had to be removed. And um, I think in reality, it was a lot of... Uh, there wasn't much car left when he started. No, actually, there wasn't. Um, and... I bought the car from a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, um, Terry Moyer in, out of Gibsonton, Florida. And he restores Mopars. And um, he had this, when I first saw this car, it was in the jig, and the floors were out and the quarters were off. So there wasn't a whole lot here. But as time went on, I watched him build it, and it's basically better than new. 
Oh, no, um, absolutely. The precision he, he put into the build of this car, you would have never found on an assembly line in 1969. And, you know, I don't know if you, if you noticed, like, the door jams, all the, all the gaps are straight. They're a little wider than they would be on a current car, but they're straight. Um, and you can feel there's no dash shake or anything. It's really, a, really a nice car. No, he really put this thing together right, and the, the paint on it is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, as I said earlier, I love what you did with the carbon fiber tape and, you know, the blue interior with the blue exterior and the white top really makes it, really sets it off. Oh, yeah. Um, it turns heads wherever I go with it. We just had like a 90-year-old woman try to buy it, yep, right? so, you know. I guess the thing that attracted me to it initially was just the overall appearance. The, 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 the blue is just the right color for this car, the contrasting white top. Um, the Magnum 500 wheels and the red line tires mm -hmm. just bring it all together. And this car, of course, you couldn't get the all chrome Magnum 500s on this car. Those are from 67 only. Right. Uh, this car, when you bought it, had dog dishes and painted blue wheels. It did. It looked pretty, you know, it was just a different look. It wasn't a, it wasn't a look that I liked. Yeah, and what, what got to me was, I mean, I saw the car when it was like that. And yeah, it was a pretty car, and it was an upscale car, yet it had poverty caps. Mm -hmm. You know, a really expensive R RT with, you know, buckets, console, and poverty caps. To me, it didn't didn't really match. And like you, I like these 67 Magnum 500s rather yeah. than the later ones with the trim rings. Oh, absolutely. I think, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of this car that was done to my personal taste. It's not a 100-point stock restoration. Um, but it's my car and that's the way I want it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is, it's a nice highway cruiser. It pretty much does everything just right. You know, sure with 390s or 411s, it would be a lot quicker, but at the end of the day, it's not supposed to be a drag car. It's just a, just a fun cruiser. I think what you need to do is pull over and let Muscle Car Campy have a, a turn behind the wheel. What do you think? You're absolutely right. Let this uh, the Kano box up there get ahead a little bit and uh, see what this 440 can do. What do you say? Go ahead. Have at it. You can say what you want about, you know, there's not a lot of firm in this firm feel box but it sure does uh, make it easy to turn. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah, it's one finger. Well, Bruce, I really appreciate you letting me drive your car. Um, this thing is fantastic, and uh, best of luck with it. Thanks, buddy. Um, just drives really nice um, man takes me back <laughs> that's what muscle car camp is all about right going back going yep. back in time simpler time but uh, thanks a lot I really let you appreciate you uh, letting me drive this thing uh, it's my pleasure I hope you had fun oh it was a blast okay I'll see you later you bet <laughs> yeah I'll just take the keys what? What? <laughs> this was a great night did a fantastic video with a 69 Coronet RT. I got to drive it. It really brought me back to the old days when I had my Barracuda convertible, my 71. So we just want to thank Bruce for letting us uh, shoot his car. Um, even though I still had to put him to work, he's actually videoing this while I speak. But thanks a lot, Bruce. Love your car. And don't forget to subscribe to Muscle Car Campy.